Okay, I just, yay. Oh, thank God. Okay, I just did it again. I guess that worked. Great. Oh my gosh, great. Hello, Janelle, you look amazing. Hi, thanks, darling. How's everything going? It's going great. I'm trying to see what's the best way for me to turn. I like the window. Me too, but the lighting is not Yeah, great. like, um, let's go with like half window and half. Yeah, I, I literally have like one piece left to do on the mural. Like it's done. That's awesome. You work like, so. I literally, I might be here one more hour after we get off of here to finish. Janelle, that's so great. That is so great. I was just talking to Thomas before we started that like you're just, you just work so efficiently and you do such an amazing job. Thank you. That's great to hear. Hi, everyone. We are just, thank you so much for your patience. Okay, great. DS is here and the camera's working. Perfect. We have our instrument of the day. <laughs> we have our amazing instrument. Awesome. Well, we got the same hairdo. Hey. <laughs> we didn't even coordinate this. <laughs> Love it. Also, if anybody sees me like twitching, um, I'm outside and there's a lot of spotted lantern flies at the museum right now that we are oh. working on. So um, if one's like coming at me, I might make a quick move. Cool. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, we're just waiting for Thomas. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. If you want to in the chat, just tell us where you're visiting from. That would be great. Oh, and let me turn on this transcript. Awesome. Okay, so live transcript is on. Welcome everyone and great, we got Thomas. Awesome. Great, cool. All right, awesome. Yeah, so welcome everyone to today's program, our Artists in Residence Rewind. My name is Hannah Vincent. I'm the Public Programs Manager at the Westmoreland. Um, as we do with all of our programs, we'd like to start with a moment of acknowledgements. We'd like to recognize the importance of the role cultural institutions have in the formation of collective memory. As part of that work, we want to acknowledge that we are situated upon the traditional lands of the Adena, Hopewell, Monongahela, Osage, Delaware, Shawnee, and Seneca Cayuga peoples. We honor all of the indigenous nations and their land with great gratitude. As a Museum of American Art, we use the power of art to explore and reveal the erasure of many lived experiences that compromise the complexity of American history. Again, welcome to our program. Today we'll be discussing Janelle's residency and all of her accomplishments in the last few months since she started the residency in March. Our Artist in Residency program is part of the Westmoreland Museum of American Art Artist in Residency that has been made possible through a sponsorship or partnership with Boom Concepts and by generous support from the Pittsburgh Foundation. Launched in September of 2020, the program has featured four artists, D.S. Kinzel, Enquanique, Christiana Dolores, and Janelle Young, and emphasizes the museum's commitment to engaging and supporting black and marginalized artists, to promoting equity in the arts, and to sharing compelling and meaningful cultural experiences within the regional community. Each residency varies in length depending on the individual needs and availability of the artist. During their residency, the artist resides in Greensburg and can utilize open studio space within the museum. Artists can use the span of the residency to create, study, investigate, and reflect on their artistic practice and are given full access to the collection and our archives. Along with support from curators, educators, conservators, and other staff. Artists can use the residency as an opportunity to work on a new body of work or develop a new process and are encouraged to engage with the museum's collection and community. We're joined today by our current artist in residence, Janelle Young, as well as Thomas Agnew and D.S. Kinsel of Boom Concepts. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to hear more about Janelle, your background, what you've been doing, and where you go next. Thank you all. Oh, look at y'all. Y'all both got top buns. We already went over this, Thomas, that we just are on the same page, same wavelength today. My not bad, my not long enough. <laughs> so you gotta weave. 
Hey everyone, I'm happy to be channeling my inner Janelle today. You know, I think I'm just really follow, following your lead as opposed to being on the same page, you know, celebrating you, trying to do a little something, maybe a little uh, sonnet today also, you know what I mean? In honor of you and celebration of everything you've accomplished during this residency. Thank you. I also want to say you kind of look like one of the illustrations in the coloring book right now, so... I love it. I'm here for all of this. Good. So yeah, I mean, you know, let's, I, I think it'd be a good idea to kind of talk about, I feel like I've been closely a part of some of the projects, especially just like that one downtown, because we were definitely a part of connecting and working with you, getting that piece downtown, but you've been doing multiple things murals works for the past few years so um kind of discuss just like some of the work that you have been doing some of your prize work some of your best your favorite work over the past few years um yes thank you for that and for everything that boom does for local artists especially black artists um so in the past few years um i actually started doing murals professionally when I was living in New York. Um, I was working under the New York City Mural Arts Project where I was um, assisting other lead artists uh, with a newer tech technique for me, which was the polytab method. Um, so for anybody in the audience who's wondering what in the world that is, uh, it's essentially similar to, to the material that people use for like billboards and things like that, um, where you can paint kind of in a studio in pieces and then go and install it onto a wall. Um, so that was a cool experience. And at that time it was kind of my favorite cause I was learning so much and I was able to help other artists um, and really creating like really massive pieces like two, three, 4,000 square feet. And so I think it prepared me for a lot of the work that was then coming after that. Um, so then I came back to Pittsburgh and the first project I did in Pittsburgh was the Home Court Advantage Project, which is the basketball court in Belsuver. And, you know, that kind of opened the doors to a lot of other projects downtown. Um, I think, you know, so many people have seen like the six feet apart piece that was vinyl installed downtown and it was my signature half face girls um, with all their different hairdos and then I was able to do a piece for Port Authority public transit that was downtown and then um, I think my my favorite downtown was the Allegheny Overlook pop-up park pathway to joy so that was like that to date is my largest piece. And it was just really awesome because it was integrated into, uh, you know, the Three Rivers Arts Festival. It was integrated into the, the pop-up park, into music, food, drinks, just everybody being social and being outside and like the epitome of summer, I felt like. So that was super, super, super fun. You know, before we get into this project and the residency with the Westmoreland, you know, how are you able to kind of negotiate these deals, build relationships with, you know, so many different organizations? There's for-profit organizations you've talked about. There's nonprofit projects in yeah. the projects you listed. You know, how, how are you able to do that or where does some of that skill come from? Because it's more than just painting. That's very true. Um, I thank a lot of my public relations background and my business background to <laughs> be able to navigate those kinds of relationships. But also a large part of it is just being yourself. Like if you're bringing quality and excellence and you care about the work you do, I think it pours over into your work um, and people see that and they feel it and they're attracted to that. And just making those genuine connections um, with like, uh, Pittsburgh Downtown Partnerships, with the Cultural Trust, with Boom, you know, just, I feel like when you're not 
you know, putting up a facade and you're saying like, this is who I am, this is the type of work I do and this is what I like, <laughs> it's, it, it comes a little bit easier um, as far as making those relationships. Now maintaining them is a whole nother beast because it's work. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're able to, you know, just have something reciprocal where you can support them and they can support you. And maybe that's not a project right off the bat. Maybe that's just showing up to some events. Um, maybe that's volunteering. Yeah, I started off uh, with the New York City Mural Arts Project because I volunteered a few times and they just happened to say, okay, we know you're an artist, like we want to hire you. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I would say. It definitely has a lot to do with just being real, being open. Um, and then understanding how to negotiate the deals comes a little bit more with like experience with not just projects, but the business background as well helped me. I know there are other ways to, to do that. But for me, my journey was like the business background, my degrees in business marketing um, and then public relations where I, I worked with a lot of clients. So I know how to kind of set expectations and um, communicate when things are going to be different. Um, you know, somebody was asked me earlier, somebody was like, you know, my, one of my friends has some art that they're trying to possibly show or sell, you know, and thinking about how you got into doing the muraling, like, can you talk about like your first experience of even like, you know, like your first experience of like, yo, I want to do a mural. How do I talk to this company or talk to this business of like even how to do this or, you know, without sounding like I'm a novice or I don't know what the hell I'm right. doing. Because that's like, you know, what I mean, that's real. Like, I think that first step forward is always the hardest for so many people because they always feel like they need to have everything in order. And it's like not everything is in order ever. So you just need to right. do it. So there's two things I'm going to say. The first thing is that my first mural I worked on, I was like seven and I had no idea that it would lead to me wanting to do this like for real, for real later in life. Um, but I think the first time I pitched a mural was for the basketball court. And I just used my... I really went with like my intuition of like, okay, who should I reach out to? And I found people who I thought would be responsive to me. And what I mean by that is I said, okay, this is the basketball court. This is where it's located. I happen to be from that neighborhood. Who can I talk to who like this makes sense? And I said, okay, if it's being renovated, maybe the folks from like the Parks Conservancy would know something. And I actually, I'm giving y'all some gems right now, okay? I went on the website and I went to where they list all the people who work there. <laughs> and I was looking at people's pictures and titles. And I was like, I'm not gonna hop all the way to the tippy top. Let me find somebody mid ground. And then like, if there's a black or brown person, I wanna reach out to them and see if they can just give me some insight before I like just send a cold email. So I did that um, and I actually ended up finding someone who I, I knew and I, was, I didn't know she worked there. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay. So I just shot her a message and I was like, hey, I'm not sure if you remember me. Um, I'm from Bell Suver. I'm just trying to get some clarity on like, if I wanted to do this, who should I talk to? And she was able to have a professional but can more candid it felt conversation with me about who I should reach out to and she was like oh no problem I'll shoot this to my manager their manager shot it to their manager you know what I'm saying so sometimes it takes a little bit of legwork to figure out who exactly you should be talking to and you can't be shy about about that part um sometimes you're not going to get a response at all and that's okay it happens and sometimes you're going to get somebody who says I cannot help you and that's okay too. Um, you just gotta kind of try to find your lane. 
But then also I want to say when people come to me and ask like, how do I get into public art? How do I get into murals? And I always say, shadow somebody first, like work on somebody else's mural team first. So you can see how they handle their relationship. You can see the logistics of how things go. You can kind of understand a little bit more of like the behind the scenes and the planning. Like you're going to learn much more being there than just me telling you what to do, like, or, you know, just listening to somebody's advice. Um, so those, those are the two things. It's just, it's like work. Great. You know, we appreciate those gems, you know, just want to reinforce it. You got to do a little bit of research, you got to scope what's happening. Um, and then you got to follow up. You got to send those mess, those messages, those communications, and you got to follow up with folks and, and know, what you want. Um, yeah. and, you know, I think that's part of our job as being curators and producers, being independent artists, you know, as we're pushing this ecosystem forward, making it grow. Uh, you know, it's just like, it's always important for us to do our research and know who does what, where, and why they may do that job whenever we're trying to get some projects off the ground. I also want to lift up what you're saying about, you know, just like volunteering, shadowing, interning, you know, I mean, these are just my interpretations of your words and how you're saying, like, work with someone on a project. Maybe they can give you a small stipend. Maybe you do it for the free. Maybe you just wash some brushes, but, you know, yeah. it's an opportunity for people to build game. And, you know, reach out to Janelle. If you're watching this, you need, you want to wash some white brushes, you know, <laughs> you want to, <laughs> you want to work on a project. She has many projects ongoing. Uh, and projects are not always external. You know what I mean? Our right. studios are working on things uh, internally at all times. So, you know, even as, you know, here in, in Pittsburgh or, you know, in the winter season, mural stuff may tend to slow down or at least uh, outdoor projects, you know, still reach out to artists because, you know, an artist practice, a professional artist practice um, is both external and internal. Yep, that's such a great point. And I do have a running list um, of folks who, if you email me with the subject title murals, like I email those people when I have a project first and say, like, is, wow. is anybody interested on working on this, volunteering, assisting, um, anything? Like you said, washing brushes, whatever it is. And I mean, that's how I, that's how I started, really, as well. And that grew, like you said, into... A deeper relationship and then there was like trust building that happened and I ended up being like a studio manager for another artist and then I ended up leading projects so well you way past that point you know you on the museum level flow flow <laughs> residencies with the Westmoreland so we want to give you a little bit of space to talk about that you know you've been in residency with this program with us is it, is it six months four months how long, how long? seven Okay. March, beginning of March to September. So it's like six and some change. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, we'll give you a little bit of space because we're coming to the end. So give you a little bit of space to talk about it, how it's maybe changed your practice, how it's affected you, you know, things of that nature. Is that the question or? Okay, I was like, I was like is Thomas about to say something else or is that the question? Um. I mean, first things first, it's been amazing to have a studio in a museum. Um, I don't think that was an experience that I ever like expected to even open up to me. Um, we've talked a little bit before about how because most of my art is public art and it's outside and it's outdoors, I don't necessarily always have a studio for people to come in and out of or to critique or to you know do different things like studio visits. Um, but being able to adapt and then being able to see like, okay, if I did have this type of studio set up, what are the things I would wanna, wanna accomplish in there or, um, what are the things I, I could, how could I make it most useful is what I should say, yeah. How could I make it most useful? Um, and so I learned a lot of things about that 
And then um, also looking deeper into like the, the way museums are run, like what goes on. Like, I thought it was so cool to be able to see like the archives um, and the collections that are not currently on display. I didn't know very much about that before this residency. Um, and then just also the opportunity, like I love when Hannah reads that first statement about like reflecting on your practice because you're just allowed to just be and you're not necessarily like, I have to produce, 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 produce. Like, yes, I ended up doing a public art project out of this, but I was able to reflect on a, on a few different things and like just understanding better for myself. Like what is the balance between like producing and resting? What is the balance between like having X amount of materials and then like what I produce out of those materials? <laughs> Are these things that I want to donate somewhere or are these things I wanna make use of and like create something whimsical. Um, I was able to reflect on like those kinds of things and I was really appreciative of that opportunity. I think it's interesting, even just looking back at all the residencies and you know, what everybody has done, like what has come out of each one separately or like what people have said, you know, I think people have been appreciative of the rest. Um, definitely been appreciative of not having a specific thing to work on. Like there's not this specific outcome that we are are looking for um, that you don't generally get from a lot of residencies. I mean, that's a focus that we have indefinitely on our residencies, just like come in, we have resources that you you know we're able to provide this is what it is participate if you want to but you know just just get to work or you know work on whatever it is that you may want to work on or you may not want to work on you know it's funny like even on some other residencies that we have coming up you know artists are like i just want to rest <laughs> you know what i mean and it's like i even think about just some of our work that we do and just like how consistently we are in that space of just doing something all the time right it's like planning projects planning meetings you know going to different places like you say you know networking trying to not necessarily keep up but you know you're necessarily trying to be in the space make right. sure that are seeing you you know who also are forgetful and be like are you still practicing like yeah i'm still practicing i'm always practicing but you know making sure even if people aren't seeing you doing something publicly like you know you kind of hint to them like yeah i am working on something i'm you know i'm doing some things like maybe they will come up maybe they don't you know also kind of like taking away the expectation of that because you don't always have to see somebody's work to know that they're working right. right um and i think that's just been cool like on the outside not necessarily outside looking in but you know seeing ds and anquini do their work and what they were able to produce and then christiana seeing like you know being in constant conversation with her about what she's wanted to do like being able to visit see her like paint the space and just like even be happy about that she was just like i'm in the in the museum just painting like painting the walls like they just gave me an opportunity to paint the walls you know what i mean and um even with you like being able to kind of travel back and forth being allowed to have the space that you needed to do different things like i, I think it's it's been great to see how the different residencies have worked out for everybody Got anything to add? Just looking with your fan bun. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys so what do you what can you tell us that you may have going on? Do you have anything else going on in Pittsburgh? Um, you know, kind of I you know, I actually kind of want to talk about the coloring book 
because I think that's like pretty dope. Um, you know, I've always seen a lot of other people kind of like pick that up during like the COVID space. Can you even kind of talk about like you wanting to create that and being able to get other people to participate? Because you've done like events. I've seen people just make the coloring books and then just, you know, they're available for people to buy. But you have done, you know, interactive events where people can come and you know, pick them up, sit with each other, color whatever they want to color and, you know, kind of have a fun experience with you because it's like you're there also, like. Yes. Um, so the coloring book is called Color Your Crown. It's uh, a natural hair coloring book. I just wanted to create something um, to celebrate natural hair and celebrate Black women. Um, that's where it stemmed from. So it stemmed from the Black Girl Magic series, which is like a theme that recurs through a lot of my work. And, you know, people are now starting to recognize those characters. Like I talked about um, on the one vinyl mural uh, with the half face girls. And like, so everything stemmed from the first, like, I think the first set of those was like five paintings. And then, from there it turned into 12 and from there it turned into a calendar and from there it turned into a coloring book <laughs> and from there it turned into a mural like it was all these things uh and it's so cool to see it take on you know just a different life but i literally just had multiple people who loved the prints ask me if i was going to make a coloring book and at first i was kind of like do people even need that like i don't know um and then I got more requests for it. And then it was COVID and I had a lot of time on my hands. And I said, I think I'm gonna go for it now. And I felt like it was just something that we needed, like something positive to be out there during a time where we were just like, when are we ever gonna see the light of day? And it was fun to make. It was fun to see people get excited about it coming out and launching it. And so, I mean, I remember having a conversation with one of my friends when I was like, you know, I don't know how many to print for the first batch. And like, I don't really like holding on to inventory. Like, I'm not even sure what the price point is, like all of these things. And he just kept telling me like, think bigger, think bigger, think bigger. <laughs> and I was like, mm, okay. So I think the first round, I maybe printed like 200 books. And I was like, this is crazy. Like who's gonna, I sold out. And I was like, okay, now I understand like, this is what's going on. People need this. And I've had a lot of teachers reach out to me and say, I wanna get this for my students or whatever. So I was like, okay. The one thing I knew I wanted to do was a coloring party because like you said, like, this is a, this is for community. Like, this is a nice way for people to like get together and chill. Like. I always tell people cre creativity doesn't have an age limit. So this is for kids, this is for adults, this is for whoever it needs to be for. So if you wanna get your wine and you color, or if you wanna get your apple juice and you color, you can do that, that's fine. Um, so the first coloring party I did was virtual. I did it on Zoom during COVID. So like everybody who bought the book got an invite to just color on Zoom. And it was so cool. And people were like holding their pages up and showing everybody and whatever. And then, uh, you know, when, when we were allowed to go back outside, <laughs> I had the learning loft on the hill, um, shout out to Brittany. She told me like, I could use that space to do a coloring party there. And I had um, some sponsors to make the books free to all the kids and attendees who came. So um, I think it was the, the YMCA. So uh, Marissa, she was amazing. And she brought even more stuff, like donated a whole bunch of other things to go along with the coloring book as well. Um, my mom is always donating like gift baskets for coloring contests and um, and the crayons too. I always try to plug, you know, that we need what, I don't care what, what brand yet until one of them sponsor me, but like the coloring packs with all the skin tones and all the browns and everything, like I think that's super important for our kids to have. So, that was like how the idea happened. And then it just, I started doing it in different places. So I ended up doing that internally with uh, Verizon Media for their employees to take a coloring break 
um, because people were working hybrid. Um, I ended up doing that, um, where else? New York, I think was the, the one of the first places, uh, there was an organization there in Queens and they were like, we just want something for our kids. And we went out to the park outside and set everything up and had the kids do it outside. Um, and then I was, I was able to, to bring it to Greensburg. And that was how many days ago? <laughs> that was on Sunday. <laughs> and it was so fun. Like everybody, it was, it was some older women there. It was some young kids. It was girls and boys. Like everybody had a really good time. It was, it was great. It was a great experience. And I'm happy to, to have that experience with people. Um, so the illustrations go along with like inspirational quotes and mantras and an inspiration page. And we can like talk about those things, depending on the age group, we can talk about it in different ways. So sometimes it could be like an educational piece where it's like, you know, tell me what this quote means and maybe like write a journal entry about it or like have a kid stand up and read their favorite couple of pages or whatever it is, it's like, you can adapt it. I've been able to adapt it in so many different ways. So it's definitely one of my favorite things. Nice. And you know, you're giving shout outs to a lot of people, but you had mentioned your mom uh, in that last little clips of shout outs. You all are working on a project together during this residency. Is that correct? Yes. So our collaboration is actually finished and it stems from the coloring book. Uh, it was revealed at the coloring book party that we had at the museum on Sunday. So uh, my mom had this fantastic idea to turn the quote pages, the mantra pages from the book into pillows. So she is a seamstress and I'm a visual artist. I can't really sew. So she sewed and I stuffed the pillows. <laughs> but we got... Um, we got the mantras printed by a local print shop here in Greensburg um, to just kind of like keep it in the community, keep it in the family. And we made 18 pillows, different colors um, that were on display, almost like an installation at the event. And I'm trying to decide like, what do we do with the pillows now um, that the residency is ending? So stay tuned for that answer because I don't have it but I was super excited to do that project and she was like really amazing with it like I feel like her vision and and like my vision of the book and her vision of the collab like came out perfectly now was that something that y'all planned six months ago you know how, how did you all reach this do you normally collab you know how did you come to this space so we have collabed a few times without calling it a collab. <laughs> like usually I come to her and say, hey, I really like this thing or I have this dress in mind for this event. Can you make it? And she says yes. And then she'll just make what I asked for or we buy something and she chops it up and reconstructs it and makes it exactly what I asked for. That sounds like a commission, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, this is a collaboration. Make this. <laughs> was... So any of the cute stuff that you've seen me wear to like the sneaker balls or like whatever, like she probably made that. Um, but for this, I had mentioned toward the beginning of the residency that I wanted to do a collaboration with her, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And so I think I just got her wheel spinning and um she had came to me with that idea and we kind of like I don't know like we we talked about it briefly and then I think I went on to like do whatever I was doing and she was like actually planning it out <laughs> and then she was like okay got the colors got the fabric found a print shop let's make this happen the next time you're in Greensburg um and so I think it was over the past couple of months between like picking out the fabric, actually getting them printed. Cause it was a lot for a small print shop to print all of these out. And then having her actually like 
go in. I helped with the like measuring and everything of like the sizes and the cutting and that kind of stuff to prep for the actual sewing. Yeah, you know, I think what is so cool about this conversation is like the versatility of art, right? It's like, you're like, yeah, you know, I was painting, but then all of a sudden it's like, we're talking about murals, talking about making pillows, coloring books. Like, it's not often that we talk about artists as being in so many different spaces with their creativity, right? It's like, you know, whenever you hear about an art, you hear about their, their them painting and then that's it. Or you hear about them doing like graphic design and then that's it. Or they do performance art and then that's it. But, you know, more so often in the past, you know, I would say even the past decade, maybe a little bit, even before that, I mean, you know, again, it's like when you hear stuff in the, in the press or media, like they're not talking about all of the other things that people are talking about. But like today, you know, I mean, you don't mention by like five or six different areas that you have been able to utilize your skill set and your art. I mean, even just with the, you talking about like the first five pieces that you did that went from prints to, you know, murals, to a coloring book, to pillows. And it's like, wow, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy that just based off of, you know what I mean? And even like, if it, all of it isn't just like new work, cause like some of it is based off of just like some of the original work, like you're not, reproducing a hundred new things just to get to those areas. You're like, I made like five pieces. Those five pieces turn to like five big projects that are like dope, you know what I mean? And I think even, you know, I, I like to talk to artists and, and say that's them is just like, you know, you don't always have to create something new. Like if something is strong enough and that people are, you know, enjoy it enough, like, you can like reproduce it in, in different ways and let people buy it. Cause I mean, if people want it, they gonna buy it. You know what I mean? If people want to, you know, participate or they want to go see it, like it's available. You know, I, I see a lot of people who just kind of like get to that one thing and then they're able to reproduce it in different ways and, you know, utilize it. And, and that, I think that's always like cool. Like somebody that, again, it's like, you don't always have to reproduce or we don't have to produce new work all the time, all day, every day. It's like, all right, I got a good thing here. Let's see how this can, you know, work out in these other arenas. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And even as you were saying that, I'm thinking about all the other ways that stuff was merchandised. Like when I um, got the deal with Verizon Media, they were just like, yeah, like we've seen your stuff. We love it. Like, let's put it on um, water bottles and let's put it on this and let's put it on this. So I had like a special drop of merchandise that came out through, through Verizon. And then that led to a different project and that led to a different project. You know what I mean? Um, so just, yeah, you, you absolutely can like rework things and um still make them new still make them fresh even if it's stemming from whatever that first idea was and I think something we get caught up in is I talk a lot about you know when artists are trying to make like fast money like they get caught in a trap of doing that and it's like if your idea is substantial it can it can grow and have different branches and different things but if like you're creating this one specific thing because that's going to make you 10 15 dollars it usually doesn't have the same effect with the with the branching off and and things like that and then you do have to end up starting over and starting over and starting over so just encouraging people that's why it's important that we have the opportunity to rest because then you can create something that you actually really like. And if you love it, it probably is gonna have a lot of legs. Rest, making stuff you like.
not making stuff just because people may like it or trending, right? Um, you got a gig on Saturday, right? Because you know, were you talking about rest, but you did end up doing a mural this go round. Um, you know, this is an artist led project. So, you know, we always want to make sure artists are able to do what they want or it can shift what they want. Um, so we knew you was going to do a mural. You can't resist it. You know what I mean? That's just in you. You do those in your sleep. So, you know, talk about this public art piece that's in Greensburg, what the process has been and what's coming up. Yes. So tomorrow we're going to be having a reveal of my latest mural called This Way Up. It is at the Laurel Highlands Workforce Opportunity Center. Say that five times fast. And it's only <laughs> five, six minutes from the museum. Um, and so the museum actually had this relationship with this center already. And um, I came to see the space during the beginning of the residency just to scope it out. And then they told me more about the Opportunity Center, essentially, they have programming and training for young women. I keep saying young, but I just mean women. Um, for women who are trying to get is back into all, the Is it all ages? It's all, is it it's ages? all ages. Okay, I, think, cool. I think the the youngest for this particular training, um, it might be 18. Got you. But it's 18 and up. Got you. Um, so I've met women of all ages who are in this training. Um, they also are going to be having a youth component, but that has not started yet. Um, but yeah, they're they're getting back into the workforce. Uh, there are essentially some barriers that each of them may be facing, and this is an opportunity for them to get a leg up in, in the workforce. And so I did a community engagement program, a workshop with them. Um, it was such a great group of, of women and they were just able to be real and honest with me about, you know, their journey to this point and what they see for themselves and their future, like how they ended up in Greensburg, how they ended up in the program, um, you know, what they want to do. And they all have like such different perspectives, but with the same themes of like, I just needed a fresh start. I see that I have so much potential. I needed a way to reach that. How do I do it? And they talk so much about the support that they get from the folks at Laurel Highlands. And um, it was just a really great conversation that we were able to have. And so I took that, turned it into something visual because that's what I do. And I'm literally like an hour away from finishing the mural. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm like waiting for paint to dry like right now. Um, so that I can put my finishing touches on it. And so um, it's on Donahoe Road for anybody in Greensburg. Um, if you drive 316 Donahoe Road, Greensburg, PA 15601. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, it's it's been a whirlwind of a project just trying to like get the materials together and pick out the colors and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's also all spray paint for the most part, which is like pretty new for me. Um, this is maybe second or third mural that I've done all spray paint, um, but it worked out and I love it. And I'm excited for it. And everyone in the office seems to be excited about it too. That's great. And you know, I wanna give you a shout out just as an amazing example of an independent contractor, someone who is self-employed, you know, bring, being a Black woman, being a unique addition to the arts field. And, you know, you could, chilling with that group, building with those women, you know, you're presenting a model that they could also be, you know? I'm yeah. sure one of those folks was like, I want to wash some brushes out. You know what I mean? You know, it would be a, a, a welcome opportunity. So, you know, it like you said earlier, is the reciprocity. And that's what we're always looking for when we're working with artists, when we're working with institutions. You know, you going up there with that intention, not just like slapping something up on the wall, but like building, connecting with folks in the program there and just like being your amazing self. Well, which like, you know, we all know as artists, 
We negotiate our own terms. There's typically not background checks. There's a lot more freedom and flexibility within the market and how we can negotiate. So, you know, I think being artists and whenever a uh, boom artists come in community, we're just like new age examples of uh, workforce and, you know, opportunities within a creative workforce. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Because look, you filed this on your taxes, right? This is your job, job, job. <laughs> <to artist. laughs> yep, that's right. That's okay. right. And how long have you been full time as an artist? Since February 2018. Okay. Yep. Um, seems like ages ago. <laughs> but um, I saw the question in the chat about how long did this take? So the painting process, I started on Tuesday and we'll be finishing up today um and it was a lot of start and stop because we were fighting rain we were fighting wind because i was up on the lift a couple of times i had to come down so i was like what you're not gonna do is have me fall over while i'm up here so um but yeah so what's that like four days yeah yeah i wanted to also say during the program at the museum, the coloring book party, there was um, a little boy who was there. I had some images of and videos of my other art playing on the screen on the projector in the room. And he started pointing out like, I've seen that before, mom, we've been there, we've been there. Like, so he knew my work and he was only, he, I mean, he couldn't have been seven. He was probably younger than that. Um, and then there was another table, I believe it was a grandmother and her two grandchildren. And she told me that I was the first real artist that they had met. And so they were very excited. So like, I love when stuff like that happens. I love that because then they have a reference point in their mind. Well, you definitely the real deal Holyfield. You know, we appreciate you taking part in this program. You know, you, you did a aerosol mural. You did a collaboration with your mom. Um, you know, what are what are the vibes you walking away from? What are some of the things you learned from this particular residency? How are you different coming out on the other end, if so? I think I, again, I learned how to navigate like what that balance is for me. I also learned um, to be more realistic about like how much energy things take, like traveling, how, how long does it take for me to like settle in, like those kinds of things, like understanding myself and my own process. Um, I am also taking away, like, how can I not only better advocate for other artists, but better advocate for myself um <laughs> just being able to have you know the support of like a boom right where I can like bounce ideas or say like do you think this will work like what if we sponsored it like this or how could I do like this um I, I, I'm walking away with a better understanding and like a, a stronger like foothold on those kinds of things and like reiterating how much I'd like enjoy being outside. Like I would be at the museum. I guess I have a studio in the museum, but I would like sit outside a lot and just work outside. <laughs> we have something in the chat. What project did you do in the space? The three panels. She's referring to, um, I did have a, a client project. It was three large canvases they were like maybe four feet by two and a half feet or something like that and there's like literally no other space I probably could work on those in because they were so big so it was really nice to have a large studio where I could do that um it was a it was a private commission that piece that I did um for a woman out in in Wexford and it turned out it turned out really well I was it took a lot with that project but it turned out really well a lot of logistics 
You know, I love that you talked about um, learning what it takes for you. That's like part of this rest thing that keeps coming up too, um, because you are kind of in different time zones, multinational, international player, player, uh, super artist person. Um, how is that going for you? You know, splitting between regions, maybe testing. You've always tested uh, your wares and your artists, artist uh, talent in different markets. But, you know, how is that going for you? Any any game to share there? Because, you know, artists always need to test their works in different markets. And you do a really good job of that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we kind of already talked about I had done work in New York and even when I was in Pittsburgh, I was still going back to New York to travel for projects. I've done work in North Carolina. I've done work in Detroit. Um, I've done work in Chicago and different parts of Pennsylvania. And I think number one is just look for, I mean, for me, because I work in public art, I look for any of the public art programs that are in the major cities um, and even some of the suburbs that are around major cities. So like, for example, yes, you can look in like at Chicago, but there's also like Evanston and there's also like Skokie. So like there's these kind of little other pockets that you can look at. Then I will also suggest looking into mural festivals. That's how I got work in Detroit. Um, a lot of these things, again, I didn't go into saying like, I'm going because I want to do a project. There. <laughs> it was like, oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna like support the other artists, you know, like tag them on socials. I get to talk to them while they're on the lift, like just actually enjoy the experience and have a good time. Like you don't always have to be there like working, um, going to Art Basel, like just different things just seeing what the experience is and if you will want to participate. Um, and yeah, that's that's a huge tester. And then like, I follow a lot of the public art places on social media, like Philly Mural Arts, like I follow them. They always have good like programming and stuff. Um, you could just hop on like Instagram Live or Zoom or whatever it is. They always have something going on. So. Yeah, that I think those two things and collaborate with people. Yeah, find some artists you like and meet up with them when you travel. All right, Hannah. Hi, I popped back on. <laughs> Such a great discussion. Thank you all so much. Um, just wanted to take a moment. If anybody has any other questions, if you want to write them in the chat, we also have the Q&A box so you can put them in as well. Um, but as you're typing, again, I just wanted to plug the mur mural unveiling that's happening tomorrow. Again, that's at the Laurel Highlands Workforce and Opportunity Center. The unveiling will be at noon. Um, and I put the address in the chat box. If you would like to come, please come out and support and take a look at it. Um, I also included a survey if you would take it super brief after we end, um, that would be great it really helps us with future programs that we're doing here at the Westmoreland. And I just want to thank you, Janelle, you are so great to work with. I'm so excited to see what you do next. And thank you for Thomas and DS for facilitating this as well. Thank you all so much. All right. I have one more. I'll give a couple more seconds in case anybody does have any questions. Anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, go ahead, Janelle. Yeah, I was just going to add, um, you know, we asked about what was coming up and we were talking about the coloring book. So I am doing another coloring book workshop with the Carnegie Library. It's going to be the one in Knoxville. And um, if anybody, any youth or anything are interested in that, you can sign up for that. It's coming up in October. So my mom's actually going to be my in-person assistant leading that workshop and I'll be there virtually. So it should be cool. That's awesome. Awesome. Great. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Janelle, DS and Thomas. Hey, Have a good one. Moreland staff for navigating these residencies. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Love you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye.